This is CNN Breaking News. All right, good morning and welcome to your new day. We do begin with breaking news for you because London police have arrested WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. Here you can see him being dragged out of the Ecuadorian embassy by British police. If I, You can hear him shouting a little bit that we don't know exactly what he's saying. We are told that Assange is now in a central London police station and he could appear in court in the next hour or two, which of course we will bring to you live. Uh, this is such a fascinating picture, an amazing picture to see. It's so much history here. Julian Assange, obviously a central figure in so much of the drama in the United States over the last eight or nine years. Of course, WikiLeaks, a central player in the release of the hacked emails from the Democratic National Committee and Hillary Clinton's campaign, part of the Russian attack on the U.S. election. WikiLeaks also posted classified military information on the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. Assange spent seven years in the Ecuadorian embassy avoiding extradition over a sexual assault case, but that case has been dropped. I want to go now to CNN's Nina De Santos live at the Ecuadorian embassy in London with all the breaking details of this dramatic morning. Nina. Good morning to you, John. Yes, Julian Assange was dragged out of the embassy, as you mentioned, and showed that video footage, which has since emerged online a couple of hours ago by members of the British Metropolitan Police. The British police were seemingly invited into this very small embassy in West London at the invitation of the ambassador of Ecuador after Julian Assange's long-running asylum claim was finally brought to an end by the Ecuadorian government. His relationship with his host country had been becoming increasingly strained over over the last couple of years, especially, as you mentioned, with the revelation that his organization, WikiLeaks, referred to in that indictment that emerged over the summer uh, as Organization One, appeared to allegedly have been implicated in the dissemination of that hacked material from the DNC servers. Uh, and so the question of his potential involvement in the uh, events that led up to the outcome of the 2016 U.S. election, which he's always denied, by the way, has become increasingly uncomfortable comfortable for both the Ecuadorians, but also for the British as well, who've been spending millions of pounds trying to police this embassy, because of course they've always made it clear that the moment he were to step out of the embassy, he would be arrested by British authorities. The first charge that he would face, technically, would be a charge for having skipped bail when he entered this embassy, skipping bail on uh, the Obviously, when he was wanted for questioning in Sweden and there was that extradition request there, what we don't know at this point is whether or not there is an extradition request that it has been issued by the United States. What I can tell you that's significant is that we've just learned that the Home Secretary of the UK is likely to make a statement to the House of Commons in a couple of hours from now. That is highly unusual in these kind of cases and is being viewed as potentially something that might have to do with an outstanding extradition request for the United States. I spoke to Assange's lawyers yesterday, they said that he always feared uh, an extradition request and would have stepped out had he had any assurance that there wasn't going to be one. But obviously things did not end in the fashion that they had planned. John, that is for sure. You. Nina DeSantos, thank you very much. Please bring us any updates from the scene there. Joining us now is Evan Perez. He's our CNN senior justice correspondent who's obviously been following this case for a long time. Jeffrey Tubin, CNN chief legal analyst and Phil Mudd, CNN counterterrorism analyst. Evan, why today and what is Julian Assange charged with or do we not know that? Well, we don't know yet what the charges uh, that the United States has under seal. Uh, if you remember back in November, uh, prosecutors in the Eastern Di District of Virginia, uh, in Alexandria, Virginia, uh, accidentally posted a document that revealed that there were existing charges against Julian Assange. And so that's, the, that's all we know at this point. But we expect that the Justice Department is going to seek extradition. Uh, obviously, Allison, you know, uh, you guys know that, th that he's played a role and WikiLeaks has played a role in a lot of things, including uh, diplomatic cables that were leaked back in 2010. Obviously, the 2016 election, there were charges filed against some Russians, and at least one of those Russians was allegedly in touch with WikiLeaks, according to uh, court documents in, in, that have been filed by the Mueller investigators. And of course, in 2017, there was, the, uh, there was a release of some hacked uh, CIA hacking tools. And so uh, that, I think, the CIA hacking tools will be very, very important to this case forward, because that investigation has been very, very, very active. Uh, and uh, prosecutors believe 
that, that WikiLeaks played a role not just as a publisher of, of information that they were getting, in, in other words, being more than just a journalistic organization, they had become essentially a, a conspirator trying to encourage people to steal stuff. Let me, let me read you a statement that Mike Pompeo made when he was head of the CIA. He said, it's time to call out WikiLeaks for what it really is, a non-state hostile intelligence service often abetted by state actors like Russia. Now, keep that statement in mind when I read you the official statement from Russia this morning, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, on this arrest. They say the hand of democracy squeezes the throat of freedom. The throat of freedom here, the anatomy here, is Julian Assange's throat, according to Russia. I thought that was very significant that Russia is, uh, is upset, Phil, about this man being taken into custody in London this morning. Well, I mean, if you look at, let's put this in context for a moment. It's not only Julian Assange, it's not only the publication of those emails, including DNC emails. Remember, going back to Helsinki, we have Vladimir Putin saying, yeah, despite what President Trump says, yeah, of course we favored his election. I think if you're looking at this from a Russian optic, you wanted Trump to be elected. Putin told us that. And now you have one of the people, one of the elements involved in supporting President Trump come to trial. If I'm Trump, I'm looking at this saying, this is a problem. If, if, if Assange gets out there and starts talking about how they willingly released information pro-Trump during the campaign, coupled with what Vladimir Putin says, it's kind of embarrassing. Jeffrey, it is so fascinating to watch how this, this chapter has ended for the moment. I mean, to watch that you know, colloquial perp walk, he's, he's actually a perp carry here. Um, and he's, you know, shouting something. We don't know what he's saying. He is 47 years old, but he looks like his time in the embassy has, he's aged in double time, basically. I mean, what do you think as you watch uh, Julian Assange being hauled to justice by police there? Well, you know, the WikiLeaks case, as far as the United States is concerned, has really raised very profound issues about press freedom and spying and what the difference is between the two. You know. One of the, the difficulties that the government has always had with WikiLeaks is how to define it. Because, you know, what journalists do frequently is receive classified information from sources and then publish it. In, in one view of what WikiLeaks has done is that's it. He has received information that the government doesn't want published and put it out on the Internet. So how do you define what he's doing as different from what Bob Woodward at the yeah. Washington Post does or the New York Times does or CNN does. Now, we all sort of understand intuitively the difference, but defining the difference in a principal legal sense is not easy. So if, in fact, he's extradited to the United States and we're going to have to see mm -hmm. what the charges are against him and whether uh, Great Britain agrees to, to um, extradite him. But... Once he gets to the United States, this is not a simple legal proceeding involving Assange. And, you know, it, it, it is complex and it will take a while. One of the questions hey, people guys. have been asking, hang on one second. One of the questions people have been asking is, is what is Julian Assange yelling when he's being dragged to the van? WikiLeaks says this morning what they think Assange is yelling is that the U.K. must resist this attempt by the Trump administration. Uh, but what? Yeah. What? To, 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 to get him, to extradite him, because there is an extradition request there. I don't know what the Trump administration wants from him. Evan, I do want you to speak on all of this, but let me just play, just to, so people know where Donald Trump, when he was a candidate, was on the notion of WikiLeaks. I just want to play some sound here so people can remember. <laughs> this just came out. WikiLeaks, I love WikiLeaks. This WikiLeaks stuff is unbelievable. Another one came in today. This WikiLeaks is like a treasure trove. Getting off the plane, they were just announcing new WikiLeaks, and I wanted to stay there, but I didn't want to keep you waiting. Boy, I love reading those WikiLeaks. All right. Sounds like he's won a lottery. And now WikiLeaks head is in British custody, maybe at some point soon in U.S. custody. Sorry, Evan, I cut you off. No, no, listen, I think um, that's why it's so complicated. I think uh, that's candidate Trump, obviously, who has talked about WikiLeaks and obviously very giddy about the help that he was getting from uh, from those uh, those documents that were stolen from the DNC and the Clinton campaign. But as Jeffrey pointed out, this is a complicated case. Under the Obama administration, under Eric Holder, they looked at charging uh, Julian Assange, and that's where this investigation began. And they arrived at exactly what Jeffrey said, that, that essentially WikiLeaks is no different from the New 
New York Times, uh, receiving uh, classified information and publishing them. They were publisher, right? Um, that changed after Jeff Sessions became Attorney General. We reported previously that they were looking to file charges uh, in uh, early 2017, and, and, and partly what happened was the, the, this 2017, ha this, uh, this stolen, the, the publishing of, um, of these CIA hacking tools. And that's one of the things that happened uh, in the intervening years that uh, prosecutors at the Justice Department decided, and the lawyers there decided, that WikiLeaks had transformed in their view, from being just a, a publisher to being an active participant in trying to encourage people to steal stuff. That's where they believe the line lies. Now, Jeffrey pointed out, this is a, this is a theory that's going to be tested probably by the, by the British courts first. And then here, I don't think it's a very uh, clear shot here uh, at, at bringing these charges mm -hmm. or, or rather succeeding in these charges, but I think it, it is what makes mm -hmm. it so fascinating.